welcome to week three for the oldies but goodies session. This week we're going to uh, work on and tie a uh, hare's ear spider. This pattern is super simple, but yet we can still make it complex. And we're going to touch on a few things that we didn't do uh, for the partridge and orange that you can do uh, for these style patterns. Um, and first, I just want to kind of make mention, I've got a coffee grinder here. If you start to talk about dubbing, blends, and everything else, which we're going to get into in just a second, uh, a coffee grinder is uh, just a great uh, tool to have. Uh, this one's a KitchenAid. I've had about three different coffee grinders. Uh, this one costs about $10 more than the cheap ones, and I actually recommend buying this one because the other one's just crapped out on me after a while or they didn't, uh, they didn't do a good job, uh, so on and so forth. But... Um, Anyway, uh, I'll just, uh, I digress. I'm just kind of letting you know. So let's get kind of into the Harris mask. So now I've got my Harris mask. For this pattern, oftentimes, let me say, rephrase that. Most of the time, you're gonna see the body have an even color to it. Uh, and so the way we achieve that is by taking different parts from the mask. So we'll get a little dark, a little light, and a little medium type color and uh, you'll just simply clip it off let's see if I can try to do it on camera get everything sitting funky but I'll take a little medium here I'll set that aside I'll take a little dark from here and I'll set that aside right in the same pile and then I'll take a little light from over here and uh, I'll put that in the blend as well now one thing I want to uh, kind of touch on real quick is if you turn the hair's mask over, on these quality hair's masks like we have here from Nature's Spirit, so if you if you got a material kit, you got one from Nature's Spirit, they, they actually take the time to uh, go through and make sure that they're sending you out like top quality material. That's why these cost a few bucks more, uh, but it's well worth the money. They're typically a little bit bigger, uh, but when we get to the backside, they've got these longer fibers which we're gonna need next week. Uh, and there, there won't be a bunch of bells and whistles that we're gonna put on next week. It's just gonna be the straight uh, hair's ear nymph. So the video should be a little bit shorter. And, uh, but I wanted to just kind of reemphasize that uh, don't take, uh, don't take the material from on, off the back sides on the, or off the back side of the mask. Uh, save that for next week. Uh, it's actually very important. Um, so we're just going to kind of even blend from there. Now at this point, uh, if you, you can blend it by hand, uh, just simply kind of like this, just roll it around and pinch and pull and all that good stuff. That's how you're going to blend the dubbing. And, uh, this is probably enough to do three or four flies here. So that Harris mask, again, if you bought a material kit or if you have a Harris mask on hand, uh, just that little bit should should be enough to do quite quite a few flies. Uh, even on a size 10, I can probably get three or four out of this. Uh, if, if you got down to uh, the more common size, this pattern's tied in around a 16, 18, 20. Uh, this, you can probably tie up a dozen with just what I've got in my hand here. So uh, I just wanted to kind of get that to, uh, bring that to your attention. Uh, now you'll see chunks that kind of come up in there and whatnot. Uh, again, that's kind of what the uh, uh, blender is good for or the uh, coffee grinder is good for. It really separates this, brings it all together very nicely. Uh, and it works well for mini dubbings. Uh, so if you're uh, hooked on fly tying, uh, try it out. Uh, if you're not sure, uh, let me give you a little advice and do not go get the coffee grinder out of the kitchen. You'll make your husband or wife mad that you <laughs> ruined the coffee grinder, so to speak, or it has to be cleaned out and uh, they'll go buy a new better one because you just claimed it. Um, so uh, I digress, but um, so let's go ahead and uh, zoom in and we'll get the uh, hook here. Uh, we'll bring it up forward and uh, we'll get my front light brought into place let's see how well i did that Ooh, shaking close okay very good all right so uh one thing i just want to kind of touch on real quick you'll notice how the hook is aimed slightly up um 
the reason I'm showing you this is because it's not a mistake. It's on, it's actually intentional. And that's just to let uh, some, some of you that are newer to tying uh, kind of understand that when you come to finish your head, if your hook is uh, aimed slightly up, when you go to whip finish or finish the head of your fly, your thread is more likely to start to, or, or want to go to the back rather than down over your eye. And so I know I've mentioned that on other videos, but um, I know this is one of the class videos. So it's just something that, a uh, little food for thought, if you will. Uh, also, uh, for this uh, particular pattern, we're gonna use the uh, brown modeled uh, partridge. Uh, you don't have to use the brown model partridge. Some people use the uh, lighter speckled colors uh, like we did on the partridge, partridge in orange last week. Uh, but this color uh, or speckled color combination, uh, you, I think you'll find, if you were to do like a, a quick Google search, you'll find this color uh, is used more often. And so that's why we, we will be using uh, this color. So if you, you, I, again, if you got a material kit, you got two different packages, one that's white speckled, one that's brown speckled. And uh, so there we go. So there's a, a couple cool things we can do to this fly um, and you can kind of uh, make it your own. So let's just kind of get cracking here. I'm gonna start my thread uh, about a bodkin width behind the eye. Uh, there's no need to uh, get up close. Uh, we want to make sure we leave plenty of room for our head. We've got about a bucket and width half there. Uh, and so we're just going to work that back <clears throat> to about the front third position and cut that off. If you're not aware of what that is, that just basically means there's a third up front, a third in the middle, and a third at the end. So um, you can you can do that. Uh, now there's several ways to do the back or you can keep this plain Jane. So if you want to keep a plain Jane, that's totally fine. Yeah, you don't have to add all the bells and whistles, but uh, a lot of the times you'll see uh, tails come off of this fly. And, uh, and also a lot of the times you'll see uh, speckled partridge come off the tail of this fly. Uh, on a size 10, it's gonna be a little bit big to get uh, the speckled partridge to sit correctly without having a little lump in the back, which we want to try to avoid if possible. It, it's not a deal breaker if you have one by any means, but uh, we're, we're going to actually use pheasant tail for the uh, tail. And I have, oh, here it is, I have it here. So I'm just going to go back to my pheasant tail and you can see I've been, just like I was talking about, I've been pulling up from the base and and uh, whatnot, I'm gonna pull these off to the side. I've got, uh, well, this is size 10, so I'm gonna take probably, oh, about five, six, seven. Sorry, all these little flies and gnats flying around. It's super hot and they all like the lights. Uh, so we're just gonna line those out and I'm gonna pinch those and pull the stem away from the actual fibers. And when I transfer it back and bring them together, they should be just about in line. Uh, on average, uh, the tail on this fly is fairly short uh, or about half the length of the shank itself. And so one way we can do this is we can just put this up front where I've got my, you can see I've got my fingers pinching, I'm setting them right on top and my uh, pheasant tail is coming about halfway to the back, <clears throat> excuse me, of the shank. And what we can do is we can actually we're gonna leave our thread up front. I'm just gonna show you this technique. It's, it's a good technique. It works well with marabou as well. Uh, but I'm gonna leave it right there, just like this. I'm gonna transfer that just over the barb. So I've got this little short tail coming out the back like so. I'm gonna pinch that on the back. And now I'm gonna capture this on the front side that one rolled, but you can just easily lift it back on top. And now I'm gonna wrap this back. We can do open spiral turns. We don't need to make this uh, super precise or anything like that. We just want to get our thread lined out right about with the barb, fairly close, just so we have a little tail coming out the back. This is an option. You don't, you don't have to do that. Uh, and now we can just go ahead and trim this out. We don't, that's a waste piece. And just to help build the body up a little bit, uh, we'll come back forward. 
And so kind of like we're going to build on a little bit what we talked about last week. I, I touched on it at the very end about how on the partridge in orange, you could actually make this a flashback if you wanted to. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that on this one. Again, it's just an option thing. You don't have to do it. What I've got here is some silver holographic uh, flashaboo. And uh, I'm just using this because it shows up well. Um, but it, you can use whatever you like. Uh, it, I'm not, it probably, it, it may make a difference in your neck of the woods, depending on, uh, what it is you're going after and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, so I'm just going to start this off by, and you can see, I've got a extended out front, the flash boo extended out front. I'm just going to place, just going to place a couple of turns over, get this centered up run that straight off the back and just go for it and tie it in. And as always, there's different tie in points and everything else. We can rib this fly if, if you want. Uh, a lot of that's up to you. Uh, we'll go ahead and put all the little bells and whistles on and you take off out of everything I'm doing here, you either add to yours or take off what you like. Uh, this fly is very flexible, but we can go ahead and trim out this little tag. I try not to pull the flash boot through because it tends to crinkle and bend and everything, but uh, uh, I digress. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to my uh, gold wire and I'll just pull out a couple inches. This particular spool has been breaking on me and uh, has not wanted to play nice. So I'm going to take my gold wire and I'm going to tie this in. You can tie it in on the side. I Personally, I like tying it in on the bottom. And we'll tie this in on the bottom. We're going to take this down about halfway. You can take it down all the way if you like. But, the, but taking it halfway starts to help build this front taper. So uh, I'm just showing this because there's different ways to help obtain that taper. You can actually, uh, kind of like we did in week one, you can start to build the little torpedo shape, uh, or you can actually start to use your materials to help build this little torpedo shape just to help give a taper to the body. All right. So we've got our tail, we've got our rib, and we've got our flashback. So next what I'm gonna do, which this is not a common practice, uh, and so I don't wanna come off and make it sound like it is a common practice, but what we can do is do a, a, a full length wing case. Um, and what this does is just, it kind of helps accentuate the flashaboo that comes off the back. So you just wanna have enough that it basically covers the uh, length, or I'm sorry, the width of the shank or the diameter of the shank. So we don't want a ton here, just very minimal. Uh, now this technique is used for, sorry, that, that bug decided it really wanted to die. Um, the, this, you will see a, a full length back or backing uh, of a natural fiber uh, on other fly patterns. And so at this point, you have to decide for yourself whether or not you want uh, this lighter, oops, sorry, this lighter color coming forward and uh, having your flashback rest on top of this, uh, or if you want uh, the darker side. And that's just gonna depend on the way you tie it in. So if you want the darker side, you want the concave side facing up like so. If you want the lighter side, I'm sorry, I said that in reverse. I, I, my apologies. If you want the uh, lighter side, you need the concave side facing up. If you want the darker side, uh, which I'll go for, is you want the concave side facing down. And again, we still have plenty of room right up front, uh, so we're nowhere near the head. So we'll just go ahead and tie this in right here. The one thing you wanna make sure that you can do when tying these is have the distance run all the way down the hook shank and then be able to fold itself 
over at your tail and come back forward like so. So just, you gotta keep that in mind uh, with some of the center tail uh, or the center pheasant tail uh, feathers, you, you shouldn't have too big of a problem with that even on a size 10. Uh, it shouldn't be a terrible chore. So once you have a few wraps put in there, I'm just gonna go ahead and lift this up and trim that out. I'm sorry, you can't see that real well. And that's good, all these little loose fibers will be covered. Uh, now to make this work well, what we need to do is line this out so that the flashaboo and the pheasant tail are going to line up at this point back here. And so you can just kind of grab them and hold them together. You can take your time. If you want to help start build a little bit more of a taper, again, you can come down about halfway or just shy of halfway and come back forward to help build the front end of the body and then come back and, and so you can kind of decide. Uh, when you start to do these kind of techniques of wrapping back and forth, your big thick threads, uh, let me rephrase that, anything larger than an 8-0 uh, thread, so like a 6-0, 3-0, whatever, uh, depending on who the maker is and the manufacturer is, it's gonna be, become more of a challenge. And so we'll just keep this the way it is. It's forming out fairly nice. And we're just going to take that and start to lift it up right to where we get to the tail. Okay. If you struggled with um, having your underbody show or the white thread show, now again, normally you'll be using like a brown uh, thread or a black thread, but you can just come in and take your Sharpie marker. And all I'm doing here is kind of re-emphasizing some of the things that I had mentioned uh, in the previous weeks. But you can just kind of come and do this just to help, you know, color it if you're, if you're using white thread. Uh, this technique has been done by many, 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 many people. <laughs> it's not, I'm not just pulling this out of the hat. So you can do something like that just to give your underbody a little bit of color. All right. So now that we're at the back and we've got all of our extras ready to roll, and again, I wanna emphasize, you don't have to do any of this for this fly. Uh, if you don't wanna add any of these things, then all you need to do is start your thread, <clears throat> excuse me, start your thread like, pardon me. Sorry, I got a little, a little frog in my throat there. Uh, all you have to do is start your thread at the front, work back, dub forward, and call it gravy. You don't have to rib it. You don't have to uh, add the flashback. You don't have to add the, none of it. Um, so I'm just trying to show you some options here. So at this point, what we can do is just start to dub the body forward with the little dubbing blend that we made. And you can, absolutely play around with all these you know you'll you'll see these flies on jig hooks you'll see these flies um oh geez there there's just a lot of different things you can do here well so i'm trying i'm trying not to add too much but um but uh, you you can you'll get the feel for it and you can play around with some of these ideas and uh, kind of create your own little fly So we're just gonna go ahead and <clears throat> dub the uh, body. So I'm gonna get a couple of turns around and then start to twist and tighten. Uh, if you haven't been following me for very long, you'll notice that I keep a bunch of loose stuff out at the back. And the reason I do that is so that I can specifically add more dubbing to this easily uh, or take it away easily. And uh, maybe at some point I'll be able to show you. So now we have our taper, we have our hair's mask, and we're gonna to start to wrap our body. Now this, uh, adding these things here, like we've just done, uh, this will definitely lead us into next week. So it won't be uh, um, rocket science to try to figure out how to do the hairs, the, the traditional hairs here. Um, so 
just keep that in mind as we're moving along. We're, we're, I try to build each week of just a, just a little bit um, on things that are to come so that it's not completely foreign and we don't have to start completely over. So now you can see that I've, I'm, I know I'm gonna run out of dubbing. I can just add a little bit and twist. And you can use wax. I don't have any wax on this one. And I can see that I'm gonna run out of dubbing again. So see now I've got my little ball there. And with the natural furs, what's really nice is you can just kind of scooch them up a little bit and just gently play with them and twist them together. And then grab your next little clump and put them together. If you're really struggling with natural dubbing, uh, one thing you can actually do, and I'm gonna stop for just a second to show you, is if you take your clump of natural hair, you can see how it's kind of shooting all over the place. You can take it and gently pinch on one side and pull. You'll see how all these fibers are starting to line up. Now we're just gonna very gently place that same clump back on top, add a little bit to it and pull away. Now what this is doing is it's ever so slightly lining these fibers out into the same direction. So that way when I take this away, see if I can get this to, it's humid enough. Oh, I thought it was, just stick to my finger. you can start to see how majority of these fibers are laying in the same direction. Uh, so if you want, especially if you're gonna work down on a smaller hook, uh, say 18 to 24 and beyond, uh, using this little technique of stacking and lining your fibers out, it's, it's literally called stacking or fiber stacking or dubbing, dub stacking, or I've seen numerous ways it's been called, but, uh, but it's stacking your fibers. Um, you can just continuously do this and the, the more you do it, the more these are going to lay in line. And uh, I think people find that when they, when they actually learn this technique, uh, it makes dubbing these natural fibers much, much easier. So, it, okay, so back to our regular scheduled programming. Uh, so I just wanted to add that. That's something that's not talked about on a lot of videos, but absolutely works. And so we're just going to keep wrapping this forward. And I think I've got about enough dubbing here. Just kind of building up on itself. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. It might be just, yeah, just a touch far back. And just a little bit more. If you're not sure um, if you're too far back from the eye or not with the um, with your dubbing, uh, I suggest if you get to this point and you have this much hook shank left and you're uh, newer to tying and not as familiar with working with natural materials like such as hair's mask, I would suggest not trying to encroach that eye anymore. Uh, you, you'll you probably have a hard enough time with it the way it is now uh, to start to bring this guy forward. And having an extra gap in front of your uh, hook eye is really not all that big of a deal. Uh, matter of fact, it's actually quite common with salmon flies, so. Okay, let me see if I can just adjust my camera just a fuzz. I think I bumped it. So now what we're looking to do is uh, if you don't want all the bells and whistles, you'll just move on directly to the uh, pheasant uh, tail, or I'm sorry, the um, partridge feathers. But I'm gonna put a full on back in. And again, we wanna keep these fibers flat right across the top like so. And we wanna make sure that they're coming out right over the hook eye. And all you gotta do, once you, once you get that, is just place a couple of turns over. I have no idea what animal just did that that's in my garage, but that was pretty cool. 
the wonders of living in the woods. And so you can, you can see how there's that natural back to it. It's a very subtle thing, uh, but uh, it's just something that you'll see people do. And so I wanted to make sure I covered it. I'm gonna fold that material to the back and wrap back. This is gonna to start to build the head a little bit and give a little bit of a uh, prop area, if you will, for the pheasant tail. I'm sorry, I keep saying pheasant tail, for the partridge. Now I can bring my flash back over right along the top. And all that, all this bottom piece really does is just give a nice solid foundation uh, for this flash to lay on. So again, I'll place a few wraps over, reverse it, bring it to the back. And uh, don't, don't try to pull this flash out, just cut it off. So now we can see you know, get that little hair right up front by the eye that I don't like. You want to try to take care of these when you can and not wait till the very end if possible. So now we've got all this, this great bugginess going on. We've got a little tail going on. Uh, and now we can rib our fly coming forward. Now the whole idea on this is that the rib is going to protect the backing. It'll help provide some segmentation to the fly itself. Uh, one thing you want to kind of keep in mind as you're doing this is when you bring your wire up and over, when you get to your top fibers, don't, don't pull. Just kind of gently lay the wire on top. And then when you get your wire to the other side, pull down. And that's going to help keep that centered right on top of the back. Now you got, I kind of got a bunch of geef there. You can't see it very well. Usually groom these at the end, but so we come up and over and then now we loosen up tension as we come around as we come down underneath. Now you can see I'm going to pull that tight on the, on the uh, underside and that will help ensure that your fly uh, has an even back to it, but uh, you can use, uh, you don't have to use silver again. You can use uh, pearl or gold. You don't have to do any of this mess. Maybe I'll actually uh, just tie the fly again here in just a second and uh, just show you the plain Jane basic way without any of the extras. So we're going to tie this wire off on top coming forward and then you can see how I've already started to build that entire head. We're going to helicopter this wire off. For the back end of that fly. Uh, you want this nice and buggy uh, and uh, scraggly and uh, just basically the way it looks right now. It's uh, these all represent different kind of natural materials. They flow well in the water. And so don't be afraid of it's a little scraggly. As long as your hook point is clear, you're fine. So to do the, uh, I'm not gonna rehash all the uh, stuff like we did last week, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean this feather up by pulling all the fluff off, get rid of the phyllo fe feather, anything that I don't want. Uh, you can strip one side, all, Basically, everything we just did with the uh, partridge feather uh, last week, we can do again here. I'm going to cut this again into this little diamond shape. I just personally, I find uh, that it's a little easier for me to work with for whatever reason. And we want to tie this in. Make sure your thread is at the back, moving into the fly, just ever so slightly. Put this along the side. I'm going to take a few turns forward. Just going to grab everything and reverse the material, help keep it from pulling out. And now back forward. So you can see, I've got this little tiny tip right there, and that's got to go. If I can get a good angle on it here. All right, that'll work. Uh, and so I'm just going to actually this on the 
For this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and double that hackle over. Again, you can strip this like we did last week, whatever you like. Um, and we'll just get this fly moving. Put your finger on the back side to help line it out and straighten it out. That pretty much came over right where I wanted it. Oops, I do not have my thread at the back of the head. You, make, you wanna make sure your thread is at the back of the head. Don't try to swing your thread from the front to the back when doing this. And we'll just capture, capture that. And again, I'm gonna reverse that, tying it down. And the stem already just broke off naturally. They're very, very fine stems. And we can go ahead and color our thread. I'm just gonna color this one brown. You can use black. You could put, uh, again, a little hot spot on there or whatever you like. I'm just gonna try to capture this so it leaches into the head. I'll just make a couple of passes to try to cover all that up. Ideally, you wanna have brown thread or whatever color thread you want to, want to use, but uh, if you're new to fly tying, Sharpies are great, and this is why. So, there we go. And so now you've got a, a uh, a hair's ear soft hackle. This is kind of some of the bells and whistles on it. Uh, I'll go ahead and pop this out and uh, we'll just tie tie one regular without all the bells and whistles. Um, it's gonna run a little bit longer than I'd anticipated, but I did wanna show this just so that uh, you know that you can tie one of these without all having to do all the extra work. Uh, we can make it real simple. Okay, so to do this, I'm just gonna start my thread about the same, start working it down. I'm not even gonna build a taper or anything. And you'll see a lot of videos doing this kind of stuff where they don't add all the extra stuff. They don't build the taper, they don't build none of this. Uh, they just want a quick fishing fly. Oftentimes, they'll be called a guide fly uh, because the, guide, the fishing guides can tie these uh, on the water extremely fast and uh, they work. So, but if you're a, an addicted fly tire like myself, then uh, I'm sure you realize that uh, you wanna add some of the bells and whistles and challenge yourself, which is uh, one of the things I, I, I try to provide by making these videos a little bit extra long with a little bit extra detail. So you don't have to go searching all over the place for them. I would still, personally, I would still add a rib, but uh, a lot of people don't. So it is what it is. Just trying to cover as much ground as possible uh, for you to learn from and enjoy and share and try for yourself. Make sure you uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed and always drop a comment below. Uh, if you're wanting some help on something, uh, you can message me or leave a comment. Uh, it's easier uh, for me if you just become a member of over at Fly Time for Beginners on Facebook uh, and you'll have more direct access to me or you can find me over at flyvault.net. All right, right up front. Not sure how long I've been tying this, but it's under five minutes. And then I'll just get my hackle. I'm not gonna size this hackle. And I'm gonna prep it off camera because you've already seen me prep one. And I can do it much faster this way.
And all I did there was to make sure I cut my little diamonds small enough that um, I didn't have to um, do any extra clipping. And again, I'm not going to add any bells or whistles. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that bare stem around. I'm going to fold that to the back. Break that stem off. Now uh, let's color this one black just for fun. And now I've got my little tiny head. And for those of you that don't know, I, I really like to wet whip, and that's just where we take our uh, super glue, put a little bit right on that colored thread. Uh, I know I talked about that earlier in one of the uh, previous videos. Um, I don't do this with colored threads, just, just on black. For whatever reason, the black Sharpie with the super glue, or the crazy glue specifically, seems to not whiten and dull. So now we can just whip finish right there. It's already all glued shut. And so if you really want to get down to business, you can tie one of these very, very quickly uh, and have it be effective. But uh, again, I can't explain all the bells and whistles without taking, taking and spending a little bit of time with you. So other than that, uh, fun week. Uh, it's a great pattern. I hope you pick some stuff up. We're going to take some of these techniques over into next week for when we actually do the uh, uh, the GRE, the gold ribbed hairs here, and uh, we'll talk. We'll get a little in depth on that and uh, what some of the standards are <clears throat> when uh, when you're talking like uh, from FFI and the original and all that stuff. We'll we'll be basically tying the original. So um, and uh, it's. It's not a difficult fly, but it is difficult in the sense uh, that it can be uh, tricky to get your proportions and all your materials correct and where you would like them. So stay tuned for that. And uh, other than that, everybody, uh, I've kind of already done all my prompts. So uh, happy tying, take care, and I'll see you next week.